chase the sunset, sunset Looking for a glimpse of heaven's skies I've been given a taste for something That nothing in this world can satisfy
and in the communities that they are a part of. We've heard about your family, their families, and we've heard about their friends. And we want to say thank you to all of you for their, your support of them, and particularly those churches that have helped them through this year. And thank you, of course, for being here uh, tonight. Uh, tonight is a massive celebration. Uh, it's a celebration of who these people are and what they have done. It's a celebration of the differences that they have made in so many people's lives, and it's a privilege to be able to spend that year with them. This year has also been a tough one for many of us. Uh, there has been joys and grief. But this year we have also laughed together, lived together. I've told them to go to bed several times. <laughs> we've loved together and we've cried and comforted each other. And it's all because of Jesus and the gospel. So it's appropriate as we begin that I pray. So please bow your heads and I will pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this year. We thank you for Jesus and all that you have done for us in him. We thank you for what you have done in the lives of those in year 13 this year. And Father, may everything we say and do tonight bring you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. The wonderful truth that unites us at year 13 is the gospel of our Lord Jesus. And it's within this gospel that we are reminded of the love of God at the cross each and every time we look at it, we're reminded of the great love of God that never changes. And this song reminds us, reminds us of how deep the Father's love is. So let's stand and sing together how deep the Father's love is.
uh, this year here at Year 13, and there have been many ways that we've uh, seen uh, the young people you're going to meet uh, tonight uh, grow in their Christian faith. Uh, but if you have a look at the screen, we've got a video uh, where you can hear some of their reflections. And then we're going to be... no, no. I don't know what to say. Why did you make me say? <laughs> Go, Sarah. How have I grown? Um, how we live for God's glory, not our own. I feel like God has grown me in every aspect of my life this year. Uh, I've grown in my thankfulness, both for what Jesus has done for me, but actually all the things that God has blessed me with. Um, in every aspect of my life. I think the more you read the Bible, the more you realise how much more you need God. I have definitely grown in my dependence on God this year. How have I grown? I've learnt a lot more about myself. Um, I have grown in ways I didn't expect. And I've become more emotionally dependent on God. I think I've grown in my hunger to see more people know Christ. I've grown in my ability and confidence to um, share the gospel and also lead in my different ministries. Uh, depending on God. In ministry, uh, so Fiji just made me more mission-minded. Understanding the personal relationship that God calls me to have with Him. I've grown in coming to God with all my questions. Um, I've grown in my confidence, my ability um, to just chat to people about Jesus. Year 13 made me think about how I approach ministry spiritually. I think I've grown in my independence and in my faith. Well, I have grown this year vertically. So I've grown in my love for God and love for the Bible especially. I have grown through the knowledge of the Bible and being able to apply it in the practical world around us. Um, so you know in class when teachers tell you to like highlight the important parts and so you highlight the whole page? That's this year for me. Uh, highlight for me is Fiji. Uh, highlight for this year is probably Fiji. My highlight was Fiji. My highlight probably be Fiji. Definitely Fiji. The highlight would have to be Fiji. Fiji Training Week. So my highlight for Year 13 this year has been the... <laughs> the highlight for me for Year 13 is the incredible community and the fellowship that we all have together. Uh, a highlight of Year 13 for me would be the Hoots. I've really loved prayer triplets this year. I've really loved uh, our prayer triplet time. Walk up evangelism. Uh, my highlight is every time I was pushed out of my car. Door knocking, walk up, all of those things are very most of Oh, definitely um, the ability to go and do ministry at our churches. Definitely doing ministry with my church. Uh, a highlight for me every week would be chapel. Chaplaincy groups. My highlight are the late night Maccas runs with the girls singing high school musical theme songs. This taco. The lectures. Highlight, uh, that would be days out with everyone. Memes. Making new friends. Building lifelong friendships. My highlight of Year 13 was definitely making friends. Getting to know his different people and making really awesome friends. Making new friends, like Jacob Wood. Jacob? Why, well, hello! Oh, hello! <laughs> hello! Year 13 in one word. Challenging. Worthwhile. Superb. Amazing. Populous. Forever. Fruitful. Refreshing. Great. Swish. Community. Maturing. Christ-centered. Worthwhile. Uh, a blessing. Worth up. Refreshing. Inspiring. Best. Best. One word, life-changing. 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 Exuberant. Change. Knowledge. Jesus. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Dank and spicy meat. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Amazing. Enriching. Reflecting. Exponential. Above approach. Valuable. Rewarding. Dank memes. Juicy. 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 <laughs> Cheese garlic nut. Refining. Ridiculous. Fellowship. Water centric. Rowdy. Great. Tofu. Strengthening. Mint. Magic. Legend. Wait for it. The Nakavakalevu Wananavu Nakavu. Dairy. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Amelia Bigby. I'm one of the staff members.
Dom is here and I would like to introduce to you Kezia. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Kezia, you're a blog student. Uh, can you tell us about where you're from and what church you're a part of? So I'm from Harvey Bay in Queensland and I go to Harvey Bay Baptist Church. Um, the ministries I've been involved in is youth ministries, um, kids ministries and the worship team. Thanks. And what is one of the best things about being a blog student? Uh, I think one of the best things about being a blog student is just to be able to see like the stripped back vulnerable side of all the blockies that they wouldn't normally share and just to be able to share with each other. Um, and I'm reminded of the verse in Romans 12 where um, it says that the church or a group of Christians um, mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice. And I think that's really brought out in the blockies group. Uh, if you had to pick just one of my life from the year, what would it be? I think you're all expecting me to say Fiji, but um, I think one of the highlights for me would be um, just any time we had fellowship together, whether it was through lunchtime or praise and worship time, um, just being able to spend time with you 13 as a community. And do you think year 13 has been worthwhile and why or why not? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think year 13 has taught me how to um, rely on God more and not rely on myself and yeah just to be able to be pushed out of my comfort zone and I think I'm a much stronger Christian than what I was at the start of the year. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Hello there, my name is Max and it's been my pleasure to have Nathan in my chaplaincy group this year. We're going to ask him some questions as well. First thing Nathan, what church do you go to and can you tell us one highlight and one challenge of your ministry placement there. So um, I go to St Matthews in West Kimball, uh, it's been awesome year in ministry. Um, and yeah, there definitely have been a lot of challenges um, as well as a lot of highlights. Um, but I think one of the highlights would be just seeing kids that come back every week to kids group and that kind of thing and just seeing them grow each and every week and spending time with them and seeing them grow in that way. Um, I think the challenge or the flip side of that is um, going when you don't want to be there and pushing through the tiredness and um, yeah, all the stuff that goes in your head when you don't want to do uh, ministry and just pushing through it and setting it to work well. Thanks man. And in Fiji, what was one of the biggest things that you learned? Uh, I think Fiji um, definitely, definitely would have been um, how I serve. Um, just seeing particularly a few people uh, on our local church mission. Um, they just kept giving, there was just no point at which they said, no, I won't do that because I'm tired or I'm out of breath. It's just always, and yes, I'm always ready to do what is needed to spread the gospel. I'm always ready to do uh, what people want me to do. Same question as for Kez. If you have to pick a highlight from here, what would that be? Uh, it's a bit of a cop out answer, but um, I think there is a highlight for me, or if there was a highlight, it would be just each and every week. Kind of as I've said, like just growing each and every week and seeing everyone else grow and building those relationships and having that continuity all the way throughout the year has just been the most special thing. And getting to know this group of 104 of us has been just such a privilege and I'm so, so thankful. And last one, if you somehow could sneak in and pretend to be the same again, would you do it and why? Uh, I would, I would. Um, and I think the last thing because I said no last time was a joke, but I'm saying yes. Um, yeah, so I definitely would. Um, for me, there's just no better way you can spend your first year out of school. Like, it just has everything. It has the taste of mission and the taste of what that's like and feel. Um, just, you know, getting to know other people your age and the same stage of life with you as you with the same kind of goals. Um, yeah, there's just, I don't know what else would be better at this stage of life. Thanks, Nathan. You. During this year, as you may know, one of our students, Michelle, had a stroke while we were in Fiji. She wanted to share some of her reflections with you tonight. So please have a look.
that that, that uh, you've got through the year, uh, Michelle has been uh, determined uh, to be at the U13 and uh, we've been so thrilled to have her uh, with us uh, this year. In the midst of everything, uh, the thing I think um, Michelle reminds us of is that uh, our God is our refuge and strength and that He is always there. So let's stand and sing about our rock.
As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. Uh, Luther Summons, the director of Ether Tate, is going to come and share from God's word. Uh, before he does that, I'm going to pray. <coughs> o Lord our God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love, that we may be obedient to your will and live always for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's, it's really great to have you here. Uh, can I say that uh, I'm sure you know this, but I actually love this crew over here. And it's absolutely pleasure to be at U13 this year. And uh, as I was starting, I'm going to sort of share a little bit from the Bible, but I just, I just want to start by uh, sharing this is actually a conversation that happened between the British and the Irish off the coast of Kerry in, uh, in 1988. So I just, just want to start uh, with this. And this, is, this conversation was, was released by the Chief of Naval Operations uh, a little bit after it happened. So it goes like this. Uh, Irish, please divert your course 15 degrees to the south to avoid a collision. British, recommend that you divert your course 15 degrees to the north to avoid a collision. Irish. Negative. You have to divert your course 15 degrees to the south to avoid a collision. Uh, British. Negative. I say again, you have to divert your course. Irish. Negative. I say again, you have to divert your course. British. This is the aircraft carrier HMS Britannia, the second largest ship in the uh, British Atlantic Fleet. Uh, we are accompanied by three destroyers, three cruisers, uh, and numerous support vessels. I demand that you change your course 15 degrees to the north, and I say again 15 degrees to the north, or countermeasures will be taken to ensure the safety of this ship. Irish. We are a lighthouse. <laughs> your call. <laughs> but if you're Irish here, just enjoy that. Uh, if, if you're British, uh, I know it's hard to be humble. Is this true? Right. Uh, Tom Fowler, there you go. But see, it's been, uh, it's been a fantastic year, Year 13. And one of the things that I love about Year 13 is that it's a really humbling year. And the thing about what happens is when, when you get humbled is that you become enormously thankful. And, and I know that these guys have lots to be thankful for. I mean, just a few things that we sort of, you know, people were randomly writing on the board here today. It's great to hear about why they're thankful. I mean, I love to hear the fact that they're thankful for Christian community, for the relationships that they've made, right, for the grace of God, for what Je uh, Jesus has done, for Esther, our chef, who is amazing. Um, Right, for the dating rule. <laughs> for dropping the dating rule. <laughs> you can ask the couples about that. Uh, there's lots that they're thankful about, and they're incredibly thankful. And it sort of, it does remind me about the story that we just heard from Luke's Gospel, uh, that Jesus uh, is involved in, and uh, so much to be thankful for. But the story starts, and it's a pretty innocent story, I've got to admit. Because it starts off, you've got Jesus, he's on his way to Jerusalem, He's heading from Galilee, he's going through Samaria. It's sort of like Queenslanders coming to New South Wales, right? Why would you come here? Like, who here is from Queensland here tonight? Come, where are the Queenslanders? Shout out for me. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, only this occasion could bring you to such a place, right? We know that like, Jews never went to Samaria. People from Queensland rarely come down here, but thank you for gracing us with your presence. And, Jesus, he's 
surprisingly went to Samaria, but it really doesn't surprise you because that's always Jesus. He always embraces the outsider. He always includes those who are included. And all of a sudden, he just doesn't come across one leper. He comes across a whole colony of lepers. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen someone who has leprosy. It's not something you can actually easily catch. But they're not normally a group of people that people embrace. And yet Jesus makes his way to this village that a village that very few people would actually go to. And the people in the village, they knew this about themselves. And so perhaps when Jesus was a little bit far off, he was just at a distance, they cried out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. I mean, no one had been able to help him before. Perhaps he could. I mean, they heard the rumours about him, maybe they were true. And you see, this is the thing about Jesus. And the use of his notice is that he not only cares, he actually has the power to do something. So it's one thing to actually see need and, and want to inject your life into it. It's, you know, I see desperate need every day, but to actually have the power to do something about it. And at this point, Jesus, he tests their faith in only a way that Jesus could. He basically shouts out to them from a distance, look, go, go and show yourselves to the priests. And they must have been thinking, why? We, we've come to you asking for help, Jesus, and you say, go and show yourselves to the priest, but I guess we will, perhaps they turn around, maybe pack their bags and head off, perhaps towards Jerusalem to the find the priest that may do something. But do you know what's surprising about the story? Even before Jesus, even before they get to the temple in Jerusalem, it's not even in their sights yet. The leprosy is gone. Their skin is healed. They know we need the priest. Could you imagine this small group of men, ten men, from a village, their whole life excluded and outcast, and now they're healed? I've got to say, at this point, that's an innocent enough story. Like, I don't know about you, but I've never seen a miracle like that. I've never seen anyone who could do something like that. But in, 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 the, in the life and ministry of Jesus, that wasn't so out of the question. He healed leprosy before, so what was so spectacular about this one? Like, why does Luke put it here in, in his gospel? Well, Luke actually now adds in a bit of the story that he actually wants each of us to hear. You know, at this point, one man looks at his hands and his feet, looks at his body that used to be riddled with leprosy, and he goes back, and what does he do? He runs back to Jesus. In a loud voice, he praises him and gives glory to God and says, Thank you. One man. Ten men were healed. One man goes back. Friends, where are the other nine? Jesus asked the obvious question. Where are the other nine? And I remember, I remember when I first sort of uh, told this story to a friend, and she was a bit perplexed by this story, and I said, it's a little bit like this. I said, it reminds me of, um, not that this reminds me of any of the girls here, but perhaps it does. Um, it reminds me of a story of a girl who went to a private school. Nothing against private schools, but she did. And uh, she was a great girl. Not only was she at private school a great girl, she was popular and nice. Like, can you believe that? It's just so annoying. You know, you come across those people in life. And not only are they popular, they're actually nice. And so this, this girl, she was popular, she was nice. Uh, she was also a state swimmer. So now she's getting really annoying, right? <laughs> she's popular, she's nice, she's a state swimmer. Not only that, now listen to this parent, she, she always kept her room tidy. <laughs> so she kept her room tidy, she's a state swimmer, right? She's nice, she's in the popular group, not only that, she's on a piece, and she's the oldest in the family, and she has one of the cars, but she shares it with her siblings, right? And whenever they need to go somewhere, she just says, look, just tell me where you need to go and I'll drive you around. So she's a state swimmer, she's popular, she drives her siblings around, she's nice, she's popular, not only that, everybody loves her, right? She ties her room, not only that, she gets home, listen to this mum, she gets home, and then every day she says to her mum, uh, can I make you a cup of tea? <laughs> right? I just want to sit down and chat about our day. So she gets home from swimming, her amazing swimming, and, uh, and 
being in a popular group, being really nice, and driving her siblings around, she gets home and she says uh, to her mum, can we chat? And they chat, it's a beautiful story, right? And then it's dinner time. And everyone in the family is sitting down for dinner. Let's call her Susie. Susie's sitting there, mum's sitting there, her siblings are sitting there, they've just been driven around by her, remember? They're all smiling, laughing, it's beautiful. Uh, but then, uh, dad comes and sits down, comes back home from work. And uh, everyone's chatting at the table, but then dad turns to Susie and says, Hey Susie, how's, how's swimming? No response. Dad says, oh, I'm so proud of you, Susie. I mean, I'm just, what have you been up to? Total silence. How's your exams going, Susie? Not a word. See, for all the wonderful things that Susie did in her life, she spent her whole life pretending like her dad didn't exist. And when I told that story to my friend, she said, you're a nice story, Luther. It's great. <laughs> uh, but kids like that don't exist. They just don't. And unthankful, monstrously ungrateful people like the nine lepers in that story, they do not exist. I'm sorry, but I have more faith in humanity than that. Thanks very much. At that point, I swore, took up a bit of courage, and then I said to her, I said, when was the last time that you said to the God who gave you everything, thank you? When was the last time that you said to him, I love you? When was the last time that you called the God who gave you everything, your father? She said something to the effect of, I never said that. <coughs> well, he said there's a Russian writer, uh, his name's Dostoevsky, right? And uh, he said this about humanity. He said about us, he said, if he's not stupid, he's monstrously ungrateful. Right? I, I, in fact, I think the best definition of humanity is the ungrateful biped. <coughs> oh, that's not bad. Oh, how about the Depot philosopher, uh, Homer Simpson? <laughs> huh? Have you ever heard of his famous grace before the evening meal? He's there at the table with Marge, home, with, um, with Lisa, with Bart. Sends little bubbles around, and Homer sits there and he says, Grace, and he says, Grace, like this. He says, Dear God, we paid for all of this ourselves, so thanks for nothing. <laughs> Friends, most of us don't say that, but most of us actually think that. We're not the leper that comes back. You know, they're the average Aussie tomorrow morning's going to wake up Thursday morning. You know what's going to happen Thursday morning? We're going to breathe in clean air, unlike most people in the world. Uh, we'll drink clean water. We'll go down for breakfast. And, and, and what will that be like? You know, you'll go down for breakfast and you'll say, what are we going to have this morning? Uh, cornflakes, wheat bits, muesli, all bread. What am I going to have? Uh, or what, what sort of milk am I going to have? Uh, maybe I'll have light milk, soy milk, right, full cream milk, camel milk. That's the thing now. Uh, $20 a litre. Uh, and, and I'll have toast. I mean, what sort of toast will I have? Sort of raisin toast, high fibre toast, low fibre toast, GF toast, whatever. And will I have butter? Maybe I have some butter. Will I have margarine? Will I have olive spread? Will I have butter? Will I have, can't believe it's not butter? <laughs> and not only that, after that, you're going to drive into the city. Right? A trip that would have taken your grandparents a day, and it'll take you what? An hour? Maybe less? Right, unless you live in Richmond, take a little bit longer. Uh, yeah. You'll arrive at work and you'll press a button and flying down into your computer will be more information than Einstein would ever have dreamed of. You'll go home at night, you'll press another button, then all of a sudden a beautiful music will play. The symphonies of the world, the Beatles, Lady Gaga, whatever it is that you like, right? pristine clarity. After that you'll switch off your stereo, you might go upstairs, you have a nice shower, they'll actually be at the perfect temperature. You'll actually slip into bed and have a nice sleep at night. And most Aussies would say, I owe no one anything. Thanks for nothing. Friends, the sign of a believer is that you are deeply, deeply thankful.
Because I, I, I know, the, the, one of the marvellous things about youth, and I'm going to talk to these guys for a minute, is that you, you know that when Jesus healed those lepers, he was actually on his way somewhere. He was on his way to this place called Jerusalem, and I know that you know that. And you know what I also know is that for all the things you are thankful for, and you're thankful for all this, and lots of the other random stuff that we do at E13, but I know that you know that Jesus is on the way somewhere. And then his work is more than skin deep. I know you know that, Anthony. And I, I know that you know that when he arrived in Jerusalem, that at first the crowds were praising him and the palm branches were waving at him, but all of a sudden the crowds would turn and the politicians with him. And all of a sudden Jesus would endure a sham trial and they'd laugh at him and they'd flog him and they'd spit at him and they'd hang him up between two leaves. And I know that you know that Jesus is not a victim of this. I know you know that he actually did that so that he could take the just judgment that we deserve for our sin. And you said, I know that you know that there is nothing more liberating in this world than to have nothing held against you. Jesus in his death dealt with all of your sin and he dealt with all of your guilt and he dealt with all of your shame. And I know that you know that. And for all the stuff that you're thankful for right at this moment, I know it's for that moment when Jesus died on the cross in Jerusalem that you are deeply, deeply thankful. Because it's one thing to see Jesus' friends hanging on the cross. The whole world has seen Jesus hanging on the cross. It's another thing to actually run back to him and say, thank you for dying on the cross. It's another thing, and I know that you've done this, is that these guys, metaphorically speaking, have actually thrown themselves face down at Jesus' feet and have said, for the rest of my life, I'm going to live thankfully in service of him. Deeply thankful. Uh, these guys know my story. Uh, they know that from about half of my life, I was about as proud as the British Navy heading towards an Irish lighthouse. I found myself at their age in a fairly charmed position in life, and I have to say that thanking God for any of it was about the furthest thing from my mind. Uh, friends, pride can be pretty hard to deal with. Uh, I can actually see a lot of myself in some of the young men, particularly you for them. Uh, we've actually had some many classic moments of dinted pride this year. Uh, can I share one of them with you? I remember our last two days in Fiji. I'm sure you can imagine this. The young men who were in this story, they'll recognise themselves, right? We were staying in our sort of three-star Fijian resort at the end of um, our stay. And we said to the lads in particular, right? I don't know what it is about young men, but they got, it normally takes a second introduction sometimes. And they, I, I said to them, we said, don't drink the water. <laughs> Okay, like we've been here 26 days already, the water is not safe, you still need to treat the water with water purification drops, do not drink the water. Okay, just two days to go, and you can drink normal Sydney water, it's going to be fine, right? Friends, what do you think three of our finest young men are using in here? They thought, ah, oh, come on, we'll be right. And I reckon as they drank the cup, they said, look, who's tough now, mate? <laughs> And I have to say that that night, when that unpleasant sound that accompanies drinking dodgy water in Fiji rang across the campsite. I'm sure you don't have to imagine too much what that sound was like. I have to admit that as I lay there in my bed and I hear that sound, <coughs> an enormous smile came across my face. You know that guy that went into a colony of lepers that no one else would go into? 
And you know that guy who actually willingly went to Jerusalem and died on the cross? And I beg you to spend the rest of your life deeply, deeply thankful. <coughs> Um, our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for all that you've done in the lives of the year families this year. But Father, more than that, we, we thank you for your son. We thank you that he lived our life. Father, we thank you that he cared. Father, we thank you that he had the power to make a difference. But most of all, Father, we thank you for his death where he died for our sin. Father, we thank you that he's taken away all of our sin and all of our guilt and all of our shame. And Father, we know that without you, we cannot say thank you. It's hard to admit that we've ignored you, but I pray, Father, that for everyone in this room, and particularly for you, Zernes, tonight, that they would spend the rest of their lives deeply, deeply thankful for Jesus. And we pray in his great name. Amen. Amen. There is so much to be thankful for. I think uh, this year, uh, with my two chaplaincy groups and just in general conversations, as I've reflected on Ephesians 1, there is so much uh, to be thankful for as Christians, that we have every spiritual blessing in Christ, that we are chosen and adopted, holy and blameless, forgiven and redeemed. So many blessings are ours in Christ, and they all come by God's grace alone. So let's stand and sing in response what we have heard of God's grace in Jesus. Let's stand and sing together.
presentation time. Uh, what's going to happen is each uh, truckancy group will come up and uh, receive their little memento of the night and of this year. Uh, to help it all run smoothly, there is 104 of them. Uh, we are going to do it uh, quickly but nicely. And uh, if we could hold our applause until the end of each group, uh, that would be great. Uh, each student has written for us their plans under God for next year. Uh, so you'll be able to hear uh, what they'll be doing. I'll invite Luther back uh, as he reads all the names. But before we do that, I, I just really want to, I guess on behalf of all of you, uh, to thank the amazing team that makes up our year 13. Uh, we also <laughs> Uh, we love them. Can, can I just name a few other organisations that have really helped for the last week? I just want to say thank you. AMP, Anglicare, Youth Works Outdoors, Youth Works Ministry Support, all, all of Youth Works, thanks. Uh, <laughs> CMS New South Wales, Anglican AIM, Rock and Southern Cross Camps, Soul Revival Church, in fact all of your churches, uh, Contuber Conventions, Deep Youth Convention, University of Sydney, uh, Dane Bank, thank you. To all of our fireside guests, I'm sure some of you are here tonight. Uh, there's too many people to thank. And I just want to say, the way that you input into what we do at Youth uh, we're really grateful for. Uh, I want to say a personal thanks to our support staff, to Tenny, to Suzanne Bacon, to Esther Croft. To our amazing block parents, Pete and Vinny. Who are spending their retirement. If, if you want to wonder how to get really busy for Jesus in your retirement, just chat to these guys. Uh, our graduates, who actually number uh, 625 after tonight, uh, lots of them come back and serve you 13, really thankful to them. Uh, do you know that we actually took um, 128 people to Fiji this year, uh, which is just ridiculous, and uh, we all came back. And I really want to thank Wayne and Trin uh, for their leadership of the Fiji mission. <laughs> Such a godly and focused uh, team. It was 24 leaders, is that right, Trent? Something like that. Uh, in Fiji this year, really thankful. Uh, but particularly, I uh, want to thank uh, the team that are here each and every week. I'm going to have my back to them. Uh, uh, to Trin and Eric and Mick and Kiara and Amelia and Joe. And to M. Bartley, my school Smith and Cass. Uh, an amazing team. God has been so gracious in bringing them together to serve the people that you love that are sitting over here. Uh, so why don't we give a big round of applause. Study 
Derby Missions to the Alliance Institute for Mission. Bridie Judge Mears. Bridie is looking forward to studying a Bachelor of Paramedic Science at QUT in Queensland next year. Hannah Patterson. Uh, next year, Hannah is looking, for, is looking forward to getting involved in campus ministry and creative industries at Newcastle Uni. She's excited to keep learning and to continue the ministry with youth group that she's begun during year 13. Kate Harder. Kate is going to be working full time next year in a job that allows her to continue to prioritise her ministry. She will be continuing to love and serve Jesus by working in her church's kids church and crash programs. Lydia Ostrom-Meyer. In 2017, Lydia is looking forward to continue to gain more experience in different ministry areas. She's excited about using the skills she has learned this year in growing her relationship with God more. Madeline Woods. Madeline is planning to move to Canberra next year and is auditioning to study at Canberra Academy of Dramatic Arts soon. She's looking forward to being able to share the gospel with new people using the skills of the time at Year 13 as daughter. And Victoria Smith. After Year 13, Victoria will be working full time in her hometown of Dolby. She'll also continue to serve at the kids club at her church. Can everyone congratulate you. Next is Kiara's uh, block chapter to group, Annie Murdoch. In 2017, Annie plans to study a Bachelor of Psychology at the Australian National University. She's looking forward to continuing to serve in her church next year and glorify God in any way she can. Emily Hefford. Emily is excited to start a Bachelor of Nursing at Griffith University in Brisbane in 2017. She plans to actively continue her ministry to a local church and is keen to get involved in uni ministry in whatever way she can. Hope Campbell. Hope is unsure about what next year holds, but is considering studying social work. In the immediate months, she will be babysitting her uncle and aunt's newborn. Katrina Fitzgibbon. Katrina is still not sure what the plan for next year is, but is hoping to get into either nursing at the University of Canberra or join the Australian Federal Police. She will also continue to do ministry in her local church through the music team. Kezia Mitchell. Kez really has no idea what she wants to do next year. <laughs> what she does know is that she's keen to keep loving Jesus and serving him wherever God leads her. Lorinda Wilson. Lorinda will be studying a Bachelor of Health Science at the University of Queensland in 2017. She hopes to continue serving God uh, wherever he leads her in the future. Uh, can everyone congratulate her? Church. 
In the future, Tamiya looks forward to studying either psychology or primary school education. Can we all congratulate you? Next we have Amelia's Red Screen Chaplaincy Group. Amy Jackson. <laughs> Amy is looking forward to moving to London next year to do Nanny. She hopes to join a new church family and serve God in ministry there. Dottie Wells. <laughs> Dottie is still working out what 2017 will look like with regards to study and until then will continue to be involved in church and youth ministry. She's still trying to figure out what God wants her to pursue her dream of being a crazy cat lady. Um, she's hoping that you'll get back to her soon on that one. <laughs> Jess Burton. <laughs> Jess is looking forward to studying her deferred Bachelor of Social Work uh, at the University of Wollongong. She's excited to get involved in uni ministry and cannot wait to see what God has in store for her in the next chapter of her life. Jessica Cairns. In 2017, Jessica is hoping to study nursing at TAFE and is looking uh, to further study at university to specialise in mental health and become a psychiatric nurse. She will also continue to serve God in music and youth group at her church and wherever she is needed. Uh, Liana McNeil. Liana is excited to soon begin her Bachelor of Arts degree at Wollongong Uni to become an English teacher. Looking forward to uni ministry, she's eager to continue growing in her boldness and knowledge of the Bible. Above all, she hopes to continue sharing the hope of Jesus to youth at Scripture and those on the fringes of society. And I think we have a picture. Do we have a picture of Alicia Bart? Now this is Alicia Bart Anderson, who has already left us to go back to the UK. Now Barbara has returned to the UK, and she's already started a degree in food science, and she hopes to return to sunny Sydney to complete the final year of her degree in a few years' time. Uh, she's also already involved in her university uh, Christian group, and she misses all of us uh, dearly. Um, uh, can we congratulate <laughs> Next we have Cassis Red Stream Captaincy Group. Amelia Bradley. <laughs> Amelia is looking forward to doing a Bachelor of Forensic Science at WSU. And seeing where God will lead her in the next year. <laughs> Ashley Longley. <laughs> Ashley is looking forward to being involved in ministry at church over the next few months while working part time and making decisions on what the future will look like. Ashley knows that her future is in the hands of our Almighty God and she trusts his plans for her. Alyssa Coleman. Alyssa is very excited to start a Bachelor of Science with a Bachelor of Education at Macquarie University next year. She will continue to serve God in schools and church ministry and is keen to see how God will use and grow her in the future. Anna Box. <laughs> Anna is looking forward to moving to Sydney next year into student accommodation to study exercise and physiology at the University of New South Wales. She is keen to be involved in uni ministry and will continue to serve God wherever she can. Anna Wood. Hannah plans to move away next year to begin her Bachelor of Languages at the University of New England in Armidale. She trusts that God will provide her with a church where she can serve and learn, and is looking forward to seeing what his plan is for her throughout the move and the degree. Krista Jorgensen. Krista is looking forward to moving to Sydney next year to study a Bachelor of Occupational Therapy at the University of Sydney. She would like to get involved in uni ministry and has decided to continue serving God wherever she can. Sam Baird. Next year, Sam is planning to study public health at the University of Wollongong. She's also looking forward to growing in her love and service for God in various ministries at church and uni. Uh, let's congratulate her. <laughs> Next we have Kiara's uh, Red Stream Chaplaincy Group. Emily Braga. Emily is excited to be studying a Bachelor of Primary Education at the University of Sydney next year. She's looking forward to being involved in uni ministry and continuing to serve God in her local church and beyond. Jess Wilcox. <laughs> Jess is looking forward to studying primary education at the University of Notre Dame next year. 
is keen to continue church ministry and in the years to come. Kate Haskin. <laughs> Kate is looking forward to studying a Bachelor of Agricultural so Ag <laughs> Science at the University of Sydney in 2017. She hopes to sorry. She hopes to continue doing ministry at her church in Richmond and also to join the Christian groups of Union. Patty Eggs. <laughs> Patty wants to study a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Education next year to be a teacher. She's also looking forward to keeping up the awesome ministries she's been part of this year, God willing. Rachel Jamison. <laughs> Rachel is going to Sydney Uni next year to study a Bachelor of Commerce combined with Liberal Studies. She's looking forward to getting involved in the Christian group as well and continuing her involvement in church. Rachel Watson. Rachel is looking forward to studying a deferred Bachelor of Nutrition and Dietetics at the University of Wollongong in 2017 and being involved in the Christian group there. She plans to continue to serve God and others in ministry and missions next year and into the future. Uh, let's congratulate you.
Throw his Lord in his faith, he will look to use his spiritual gifts to serve the kingdom in the way God has predestined him to do. James Taylor. James is looking forward to finding out what God has in store for him in the next chapter of his walk with Christ. He hopes to find further education in the field of engineering and is excited to see how God will be working in him and through him in the years to come. Jimmy Smith. Jimmy is looking forward to studying primary education at the Crow Uni next year. He's excited to be involved in uni ministry and continue serving God in his church wherever he can. Luke Williamson. Yeah. In Luke will be attending the University of Wollongong studying a, studying a Bachelor of Arts in Modern History, leading into secondary teaching. He's hoping to continue his ministry such as music, SRE and Kids Club at Church. With an eye on potentially doing ministry, Luke looks forward to seeing where God will take him over the coming years. A lot.
Future Studies of a Diploma of Ministry in Theology the following year. Let's congratulate Aaron.
Next is Trins, Blue Stream, Chapman C Group. Caitlin Robinson. <laughs> Caitlin looks forward to figuring out next year what her plans for the future should be and following where the Lord takes her. What she knows is that she looks forward to growing in her love and faith in the Lord and seeing how this year's growth has influenced her for the future. Celeste Wood. <laughs> Celeste is looking forward to studying a Bachelor of Arts majoring in psychology at Western Sydney Uni next year. She's excited to get involved in uni ministry and will continue to serve in her church and in other areas which God has called her to. Emma Bond. <laughs> Emma is hoping to study midwifery next year. She's joyfully anticipating how God will use her, grow her and prepare her as she enters into uh, these next years of her life. Merit Minute. <laughs> In 2017, Merritt will pick up her deferred Bachelor of Speech Pathology place at the Australian Catholic University. She's excited to continue serving her church and kids and youth ministry well into the future. Molly Jones. <laughs> Molly is really excited to be studying communication design at Billy Blue College of Design. She's praying that she'll have the opportunity to start a Christian group there. Sammy Ward. <laughs> Sammy will be picking up her deferred Bachelor of Sports Science at UTS and looks forward to furthering that education in physiotherapy. She will continue to serve her church in multiple musical ensembles and the creation program. Sarah Phillips. Sarah is looking forward to going to university to become a nurse. God willing, after she has finished this degree, she is hoping, hoping to take those skills and qualifications to serve God as a short-term cross-cultural missionary. Uh, let's congratulate you. Uh, Eric's Blue, Blue Stream Chaplaincy Group. First, we've got Alex Baker. <laughs> Alex is looking forward to studying primary teaching next year at uni. He hopes to utilise the things he's learned this year to serve uni ministry and have fruitful conversations. Most of all, Alex is excited to be getting married to his beautiful fiancée. Yeah. And love for the Lord. Yeah. Doodler Wood. Yeah. Doodler hopes to continue frothing out for the boys at Christian service <laughs> and sharing the gospel with them. He also plans to enter the Bachelorette Australia at the <laughs> Above all, he knows that Jesus is in control and he trusts his plan for him. 
He's excited about what the future holds. Charlie Aspen. Charlie is planning to work in after school care next year. This will give him a chance to continue his church ministry during the day and teach SRE at local schools. Damien Ho. hopes to have an open mind and a willingness to step outside of his own comfort zone for the sake of bringing people to know the true hope of eternal life that's only found in Jesus. Josh Allen. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, Josh is looking forward to a Bachelor of Arts at Newcastle Uni. He's also looking forward to using the skills he's learned this year in both his local ministry and ministry at uni. Kai Hooper. Yeah! In 2017, Kai picks plans to pick up a Bachelor of Engineering at the University of Wollongong. He's also going to be using his skills in music to coordinate the band and music at his church's evening service. Above all, he's looking forward to growing his relationship with Christ and taking part in further ministry through his church and at the ECU. Oliver King. Yeah! In 2017, Oliver plans to either study a Bachelor of Law and Commerce at the University of Wollongong or pick up his deferred Bachelor of Social Science at the same uni. He's excited to continue growing his relationship with Christ and he, as he continues to take part in further ministry of his church. And Ryan Archer. <laughs> Ryan looks forward to studying next year <laughs> at the Billy Blue College of Design where he's enrolled in a Bachelor of Communication Design and a Bachelor of Business. He's also very excited to continue teaching scripture in the local public primary schools as well as taking on a new teaching role in high school scripture. Congratulations, <laughs> Chapman.
in order to see them grow in their knowledge and love of Christ. We thank you for the role models they have been in setting a standard of godliness and devotion that our students have been able to see in practice and begin to put into practice in their own lives. <coughs> Finally, we praise you for the way you have challenged us all this year and for using these challenges to shape, mould and refine us into the people you have made us to be. Trusting your infinite wisdom, Father, we pray for these students of 2016 that they may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that they may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Year 13 program and for the opportunity you've given these students to be a part of Year 13 this year. Thank you for all that they've learned friendships they've made and for this valuable year of discipleship that they've been privileged to enjoy. Thank you, Father, for growing them in maturity and faith, and our prayer is that they will continue to grow closer to you and more like Jesus. Please protect and guide them now as they leave Year 13 and go out to places of study and work. Be with them as they plan for 2017 and beyond, and may they bring honour and glory to you in all they do. We pray that they will be salt and light to all those they meet and that they will be good ambassadors for you and for the gospel as they live their lives. Please, Lord, help them to be gospel-minded and to stand firm in their faith throughout their lives. May these young adults be always convinced of the truth of your word and of your unwavering love for them. Help them to fix their eyes on Jesus and trust him no matter what trials and tribulations might come their way. Lord. As they go out from here now, we commit them to your care. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Lord, as we celebrate all you have done this year and with this cohort of Year 13ers, we look forward to 2017 and all you will do in the year to come. We pray for the new students, that you would be getting them ready, those that know they are doing it and those that don't. Get them ready to participate in all the good works you prepared ahead of them to do. We pray we prepare their local churches, uh, help them to have supportive and attentive supervisors and mentors. We pray that as they learn more about you through your word, they will fall deeply in love with you and your message of salvation. Grow them to be mature leaders of your church, taking every opportunity to bring others closer to you as well. We pray also for the staff of Year 13 in 2017. We pray that they will be refreshed over their break at Christmas time. Help them to be reminded of why they serve you and be re-energised to serve their younger brothers and sisters in the faith. Help them to work well as a team in 2017, united under you. Help Mike as he settles into the role of director of Year 13. Help him to lead uh, servant-heartedly. And lastly, Lord, we pray for our Fijian brothers and sisters. Lord of all nations, we pray to you that you will continue to grow your church in Fiji all year round. We pray that we focus on the grace that you have shown all that trust in you. Help you, 13, to work well in partnership with them, aiding and serving them in whatever areas you challenge them to grow in in the following year. We pray all these things in your precious Son's name. Amen. At uh, this point in the night, I'd like to welcome the CEO back to Big Works. Zach, uh, up to Sophie. Thanks, Michael, and good evening, friends and family of Year 13. It's what a wonderful celebration evening we're having tonight. As the CEO of Youth Works, it is my absolute delight to facilitate with a group of others the wonderful work of Year 13. I've made no secret of the fact that of all the programs at YouthWorks, Year 13 is my favourite. I mean, what other 
Christian Gap Gear Discipleship Program has a full orchestra <laughs> with, with a brass section. Quite amazing tonight. I've been championing the praises of Year 13 for a decade. All our children uh, have gone through the program. A lot of their friends uh, have gone and are going through the program. And I've had the privilege of appointing or approving the appointment of the staff who have served Year 13 with excellence over the last decade. Sadly, we say farewell and thanks to two of those staff tonight. First, Eric Serriduke. It's not difficult to like Eric. <laughs> He's personable, dedicated, methodical, He's full of zeal to add value to other people, and we are going to miss him dearly. Eric, thank you, and may God bless you and your family. I'm going to ask you to stand and receive the thanks by applause of all of you.
Uh, friends, quickly before we go, uh, can I really encourage you that next year's Year 13, uh, don't let either yourself or someone that you know and love miss out on the opportunity of doing Year 13 next year. Uh, I can say, it's a, well, of course I'm going to say this, but it's a life-changing year. Uh, the program is still taking applications for next year. We still have some open nights in November and December. And so if you know a few procrastinators in your life, who are still who love Jesus and want to grow in Him and want to spend the best year of their life um, growing in Him, then encourage them to sign up for Youth and Eve for next year. And uh, I'd be really encouraged to do that. Uh, I'm going to pray uh, as we finish uh, our time together, and then Youth and Eve is going to show you how we finish every week. Thank you. Uh, All right, let's pray. Uh, our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. Father, we thank you for all that He is. And then all that he's done for us. Father, we thank you so much for this year's youth and anus. Father, we pray that they would lay down the rest of their lives in thankful service to the King who died for them. And we pray this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Now, youth and anus, could you please be upstanding? Can you please go in peace to love and serve the Lord? Yeah.